give to these animals. They can go wherever they want. They can roam around. So you'll see a couple of different species of antelope over on the left. The large tan ones closest to us, those are Patterson's eland. And they can be as large as 2,000 pounds, huge antelope. So they have that light tan coat color to be able to reflect light, keep a little bit cooler. And then the dark brown ones that you see towards the bottom of the hill, those are sable antelope. The males and females, they look very similar, but the males tend to be a little bit darker. Their horns are a little bit larger. But both the males and females are going to have a pair of horns. Same thing with the Patterson Zealand. And that actually tells you a lot about where they come from, what type of environment they live in. So they live in a desert-like environment where there's unlimited resources, there's a lot of competition, a lot of fighting. It's beneficial for both the males and females to have horns to be able to survive out in the wild. So it's one of their adaptations where in other species only the males will have horns. And that's because they live in an environment, maybe forest like that has a lot more resources, they live near water, there's not as much competition. It doesn't really do the females any good to have horns, but the males still do have to fight for territories and for females. And you'll see some large, dark animals coming up over on the left. These are Cape Buffalo, very fierce animals. They're actually the second most dangerous animals in Africa. That's next to the hippopotamus. So they're known as bobbers. So they're going to team up with one another to fight against a large predator like a lion or even a large group of lions. They've been known to do that, and they've even won that fighting match. So they're going to do whatever it takes to protect each other, to protect their babies. There are a couple of young ones in that herd. They're more of a reddish orangey color where the adults are very dark, almost black. And there's also some wildebeest babies over on the left. So the wildebeest, they're the grayish kind of black colored antelope with those shaggy beards they are grazing. And the babies are more of a light tan color to be able to blend in very well to, to their surroundings. But don't get those confused with the spring box. So the spring box, they're the small antelope that are also grazing with those black side stripes. So gazelles are also a type of antelope, and a lot of gazelles are a favorite prey of the cheetah. So notice their, their small, slender body types, perfect for running. Well, they have to try to run fast to escape the cheetah, and they can't. They can't run as fast as the cheetah, but the trick is they can last a lot longer. So as long as they're able to stay in front of the cheetah, they're most likely going to be able to escape their predator. And you'll see a lot more of the wildebeest coming up over on the left, up on top of the hill. So you'll see a couple more of the babies. And we are going to be looping around the exhibit, so hopefully we'll see the wildebeest a lot better once we're at the top of the hill. But we do have some giraffes down below, over on the left, we can see them pretty well. Let me move up just a little bit, so you can see one of the young ones out there. These are um, Maasai giraffes that are out here. A group of giraffes is called a Tower of Giraffes, and they are known as Africa's Watchtower. They have great eyesight, they can see about two miles in front of them. If the giraffes are running, most likely all the other animals are going to start running as well. Probably means that danger is near, that a predator might be approaching. So a lot of the times you'll see some of the animals hanging out near the giraffes, like the orcs. So the orcs are the lavender colored antelope with those long straight horns. The giraffes obviously have their height to be able to help them reach those really tall trees. They can be as tall as 18 feet. Um, but they also have their tongues. They have really long tongues, long slimy tongues, which are finger-like at the end to get prehensile to be able to pluck the leaves off the branches. So you'll see them browsing throughout the day because our grass, our trees, a lot of our plants, they are native to Africa. So besides the food that the keepers put out for the animals, which is a lot of food, um, they can snack throughout the day. So you'll see them grazing and browsing as much as they want. They're able to exhibit those natural feeding behaviors. So the giraffes definitely keep our trees out there nice and trim. And you'll see more of the oryx antelope coming up over on the left. Notice how they're sitting. So they're sitting in what we call an alert circle. Each one's looking in a different direction just to be constantly aware of their surroundings. And a lot of the times they'll put the young ones or the babies in the middle to try to protect them the most. Well, what's really interesting is that even though these animals, they don't have any predators out here, they still do a lot of those same behaviors that they would do out in the wild to protect themselves, to protect their babies, which really does come in handy when we uh, reintroduce the 